السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبيه ومصطفى سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه وبعد Brothers and sisters, welcome to another live edition of your program Ask Uda during the blessed month of Ramadan and um, inshallah I'd like to begin by reminding you with our phone numbers area code 002 then 0238 131 or 132 and also tackle a couple of pen pending questions from the previous episode Brother Taslim from the uh, case I said is there a hadith that says that the Salah is complete uh, without reciting Surah Al-Fatiha if the person joins the Imam while in a state of Ruku'ah while there are other hadith that says that if the person doesn't recite Surah Al-Fatiha his prayer will be invalid how can we reconcile between the two references if there is any yes um, as I uh, answered uh, in the previous episode a question with regards to joining the Imam in the condition of Ruku' that counts as one Raka'ah as long as you join the Imam and you bow down with comfort before the Imam raises his head before the Imam says Sami Allahu liman hamida that counts as one Raka'ah so you don't have to make it up even though you did not recite Surah Al-Fatiha it is true that in the sound a hadith that whoever does not recite Surah Al-Fatiha, his prayer is khidaj, is incomplete. But this is general. And it has been specified by this specific hadith or a hadith. Uh, Abu Huraira, may Allah be pleased with him, narrated and the hadith is collected by Abu Dawood. إِذَا جِئْتُمْ إِلَى الصَّلَاةِ if you come to the prayer well Imam Musajid while the Imam is prostrating himself فَاسْجُدُوا وَلَا تَعُدُّ هَذَا رَكْعَ If you join the Imam while he is in sujood prostrating himself you should bow down you should prostrate yourselves with him and you should not count this as rak'ah. so there are two benefits from this command number one if you join the Imam, if you enter the Masjid and the Imam is in any position, you should not delay joining the Imam. Even though this part which you will join him in doesn't count, such as a sujood or the last tashahud. Don't say, I miss the prayer and no rak'ah will count anyway. So let me begin with him from the new rak'ah or begin with the new jama'ah if he's in the last tashahud. Join the Imam in whichever position or rukn he is in. But if you join him after rising up from ruku, then this entire rak'ah you have to make it up. Then Abu Huraira radiallahu anhu also said that the Prophet man adraka ruku, adraka rak'ah. Whoever joins the Imam while he is in a state of ruku has indeed fulfilled this rak'ah. So this reference is to specify the general ruling of the mandate of reciting Surah Al-Fatiha in every rak'ah. Unless, if you join the Imam in the condition of ruku', then that counts as rak'ah and you're exempt from reciting Surah Al-Fatiha. Also, there is a sound hadith collected by Imam Al-Bukhari, may Allah have mercy on him, about a great companion by the name Abu Bakr, may Allah be pleased with him. This companion once enter the masjid and he found the Prophet وسلم, in Ruku'ah. So there was a few steps before reaching to the row. So he made Ruku'ah and he joined the Jama'ah then he walked while in the prayer. After the prayer the Prophet وسلم, said to him Zadak Allahu hirsan wala ta'ud or wala tu'ud in two different narrations. Zadak Allahu Hassan, 
May Allah increase your keenness of observing what is righteous, of joining the Imam as, um, as fast as possible, so that you join the Imam in this rak'ah. Because he made ruku' before reaching the road, then he walked. This is because he was so keen to join the Imam in this rak'ah. He said, Zadak Allahu Hirsan. Then in one narration, it is read because the spelling is the same. La ta'ud. Don't do that again. Don't do what? Do not walk in the prayer. If you join the Imam in Ruku' or Sujood, join him. But you do not make Ruku' at the door and you keep walking for a long distance in the prayer. Zadak Allahu Hirsan. Wa la ta'ud. Don't do that again. If we go by the other narration, which is wa la tu'id. And the difference is very slight. Ta'ud with a fatha on the letter ta and dhamma uh, on the letter ayn. Ta'ud, do not do that again. Do not repeat it again. La tu'id the dhamma on the letter ta, the first letter, and there is a zir or a kasra beneath the letter ayn. La tu'id, do not repeat your prayer. Yani, your prayer is, is valid. So whether it is la ta'ud, or la tu'id, both narrations do not indicate that the prayer was invalid. Rather, the Prophet ﷺ did not order him to repeat the prayer. What did he do exactly? He joined the Imam in Ruku'a, and the Prophet ﷺ considered this as a valid rak'ah. Um, it has been narrated that Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, entered the masjid with somebody. And they found the Imam already in Ruku'a, bound down. So they both joined him in Ruku'a. After the prayer, this person got up to make up the Raka'ah. Ta Abdullah ibn Mas'ud, may Allah be pleased with him, grabbed hold of him and said, sit down, you've already prayed this Raka'ah. And this is a sufficient reference from the practices of the companions of Rasulullah who have observed and heard the advices and the a prayer of the Prophet Sallallahu and his recommendations and correction to others that if you join the Imam while in Ruku'a as long as you're capable to do the following Allahu Akbar that is the first takbir takbiratul ihram then another takbir Allahu Akbar that is for Ruku'a and when you bow down completely the Imam is still bound down so after you do that he says Sami Allahu liman hamidah that counts as waraka. Sometimes what people do is they walk in and they say, Allahu Akbar, one single takbir, and they go for ruku'a. Which takbir is it? Is it the beginning takbir, takbiratul ihram, which is a, a pillar? If you don't do takbiratul ihram, the prayer is invalid. Or was it the takbir for ruku'a, and you did not do takbiratul ihram? So you must make two takbirs. The first is the beginning takbir. Then you make another takbir for going for ruku'ah. If the person joined the imam while he is in ruku'ah, by the time that he bowed down, he was already saying, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. Then he did not join him in ruku'ah. He was halfway or he was about to stand up or rise up. So in this case, you have to make up this rak'ah. <clears throat> Brother Muhammad from Gambia. Muhammad says, if I want to pray the night prayer, can I have a deep sleep at the day while fasting to prepare to the night prayer physically? Obviously, uh, as human beings, we need to rest. Uh, you cannot just observe several days without sleep. Then it will be very problematic. So that's why if you stay all night long in the night prayer in tahajjud, such as in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, because that was the practice of the Prophet وسلم, and this is what he recommended. Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that whenever the last 10 nights of Ramadan would approach the Prophet وسلم, used to do certain things. He would fasten his waist belt, he would awaken his family, layla, and he would stay up all night in prayer. So if you stay up all night, that means you will have to rest during the day that is permissible but this is not the regular routine though that's, also, that's only because of the the sacredness of the occasion and the timing 
you know, it is the last ten nights of Ramadan, and in order to witness the greatest night of the year, the grand night, Laylatul Qadr. But on regular basis, the person, you pray at night, uh, the night is to rest, but you get up to pray for some part of the night. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Saima from the KSA. Hello, Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the program, Sister Saima. Thank you so much. How is your mother doing now? Thank you for asking. Alhamdulillah, just keep praying, please. Inshallah. Um, I have three questions, if you don't mind. Please. Uh, first question, if you remember, I asked you two days ago regarding covering dishes at night, uh, they become makru. I got the detailed answer. Uh, just one confusion I have, exactly what time night starts, uh, like after maghrib, the night time starts after midnight, it's after 12 a.m. Um, there is a confusion I have in this regard. Okay. Second question I have is about Muawadid. Uh, Mawadatain, I don't know, I'm not pronouncing it correctly. Al-Mawadatain. Al-Mawadatain, yes. yeah. No. Um, I normally recite it when I'm going to sleep, but at times I try to, I go to sleep like after 11 p.m. and I believe it's a very long time I'm without these two rahs, you know, I'm not protected. What I started doing, I started reciting them after Maghrib prayer. What is the recommended time to recite this? Uh, I, when you are going to sleep, after Maghrib prayer is also fine. And third question I have is this, when somebody is dead, are they able to hear people around them? Or is it just a, a made up story? Like uh, when you can talk to them when they are dead, you can say salam to them. Uh, I just wanted to clarify it with you. Okay. Um, Sister Saima from the KSA, thank you for calling. Um, when does the night begin in Islam? The night begins at sunset. That's why Allah the Almighty says in Surah Al-Baqarah, ثُمَّ أَتِمُّ الصِّيَامَ إِلَى اللَّيْلَ And complete your fasting to the beginning of the night. Once the night begins, then you break your fast. When do we break our fast? At sunset, which is a Maghrib time. So this is a time that any term that the night time is used refers to. It begins from sunset until uh, dawn. That is the night. Remember, um, I guess it was yesterday, when I said about لا صيام لمن لم يجمع الصيام لا صوم لمن لم يجمع الصيام بليل In this hadith, the Prophet وسلم, said, if you do not intend to fast at night, then your fasting during the day will be invalid. That is for the mandatory fasting, as I said. So any time after sunset, all the way until Fajr, you have plenty of time to contemplate, to make up your mind, to intend to fast. So that is called the night. Al-Mu'awwidatayn, uh, and when to recite them, Sister Saima is asking about Al-Mu'awwidatayn, dual of Mu'awwidah and it is feminine because it's a surah ends with ta marbuta so a surah which if you recite a chapter of the Quran which if you recite it provides you with protection you basically seek protection in Allah again is the evil of whatever the enviers whenever the envy satans and human beings min al jinnat wa nas etc <coughs> and when we say al Mu'awwidat then it is plural and it refers to Surah Al-Ikhlas and Surah Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al-Falaq and the last chapter of the Quran 114 Surah Qul A'udhu Bi Rabbi Al-Nas She says that I normally recite Al-Mu'awidatayn before I go to sleep and she asked about going uh, or reciting them after Maghrib prayer Amongst the adhkar which is prescribed by the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam during sealing up the prayers of Maghrib and Fajr prayer is to recite Al-Mu'awwidat three times. To recite the whole set as it appears on the screen, Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and An-Nas, three times after Maghrib, three times after Fajr. Before going to sleep, 
Likewise, you recite it, but what you do before going to sleep while lying down on your bed is you recite them while summoning your palms like that. You begin with Al-Ikhlas, Al-Falaq, and Al-Nas. And each time you recite the set of the three chapters, you blow in your palms like this. Okay? Then afterward, you wipe with your palms, with your hands, your face, your head, your chest, your body. You do that three times. Jazakumullahu khairan. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Umm Abdul Rahman from Kuwait. Assalamu uh, alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Um, I have a question regarding the Catholic Sister. Mm. Um, is it permissible for a السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سيستا زينب من United Arab Emirates السلام عليكم سيستا زينب وعليكم السلام um, شيخ I have a question with regard I think it's two questions mm. I have one question regard, with regards to Zakat um, I have an online um, business that I, I trade products on and I recently bought stock on it but um, my Zakat is due and it's not, it hasn't been one year yet. Mm. So my question is, do I need to pay the tax on this, these particular items? And based on those items, do I, do I pay the tax on the cost of the items or what I'm going to sell it for? Okay. And um, my second question is, um, we, this business, I've just started it, and um, my family is actually interested in us being partners. So my question is, is it sort of, permissible for me to have my family as well in this business and then um, I'm sort of managing it and then I am they invest and then I provide them with whatever profits we get from it all right thank you sister Zainab um, just because this question is kind of hot and uh, a lot of people would like to inquire about zakat on business and trade uh, I would like to tackle it first uh, Sister Zainab, if you started, if your zakah is you and you started your business less than a year ago, it is zakatable as well. Why? Because the investment that you put in this business is from your capital sum, from the money which you are supposed to pay zakah on it right now. So as long as it is the result of the investment of your own wealth, which is do to pay zakah on it right now, you also pay zakah on the result of this wealth. But if the person, for example, uh, inherited some money or was given a grant or won a prize, then he may treat this money separately. He may begin a haul, a new lunar year from the day that he started possessing this amount. Why? Because it was not earned as a result of his initial position. I hope inshallah you understand me. And since you're a businesswoman, I guess you perfectly understand me. So in this case, yes, you estimate the value of all the items that you have prepared for sale, you, possess, you possessed in order to resell, uh, based on uh, what kind of trade you do. If you're doing a wholesaler, then in this case, you will appraise the wholesale price. If you're selling gifts, but you're not selling to individuals, you're selling to, uh, you know, as a wholesaler. How much do you normally sell these items for, whether wholesaler or retailer? So you add all of that, and this is your actual position. And since those items, which are known as urud tijara, they are prepared for sale. So basically, you pay zakah on all of that according to the value which you normally sell it for. Um, family members who would like to do business with you, that's very lovely, no problem. And Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Al-bay'ani bil-khiyari ma lam yatafarraqa. 
فإن بينا وصدق بورك لهما في بيعهما as long as alhamdulillah you all are honest and everything is clear and written whether they are family members, friends, colleagues, neighbors or people whom you do not know everything is written clearly some people say I would like to invest some money with you that is murabaha so basically you do the business you manage your own business and instead of selling a thousand item a year why don't you take some money from me and sell two thousand okay you will get that much of the profit or we will get you invest 50 percent and I invest 50 percent but I get a salary for managing the business of that much you guys are clear and in an agreement and everything is crystal clear it's very uh, permissible and you both will be blessed inshallah you can do that with more than one person and you can give your family members let's say your sons your daughters your brothers your sisters including uh, your husband yes you can do that uh, provided the profit percentage is known from the beginning and they are partners in both losses and profits hopefully there will not be any loss inshallah sister Aisha from the KSA Wa alaykum salam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Aisha, do me a favor and mute your TV, please. Yes, sir. Mute your TV. Mute your TV. Yeah, sir, I have two questions. Okay. Uh, one, okay. I want to ask if someone turned from Islam and became apostate, and again then he want to revert to Islam, he will he is having good news in the Quran, like. In Surah uh, Imran Ayat 89, Imran Ayat 89. But then again, but then if someone reverted to Islam, then uh, uh, reverted to Islam, then turned back, means became apostate. Then again reverted, then again uh, reverted to Islam, then again turned back, again I mean became apostate. And again want to revert to Islam. Allah will forgive him or not. Because in Surah Imran, in Ayat 90, they like Allah will not forgive such people mm. but if Allah will forgive can you give me one example of such people whom Allah has forgiven okay okay got your questions sister Aisha assalamu alaikum brother Amin brother Amin from United Arab Emirates assalamu alaikum Amin Wa alaikum salam, Sheikh. How are you, Sheikh? Fine, alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking. So, yeah, what, what's the ruling of when to take your, your zakat out? Does it have to be in Ramadan only? Because me, usually I take my zakat at the end of the year. Is mm. it permissible or I have to stick to what people are doing in, during Ramadan? Most people take out during Ramadan. Okay. Thank you very much and have a good day. Y you too. Jazakallahu khairan, brother Amin. This is a very important question. Very important question. Because many people think that the zakat due time is Ramadan. That is not necessarily true. There is zakat al-mal and there is zakat al-fitr. Zakat al-fitr is due upon entering the Eid time, the first night of Shawwal. And before Salat al-Eid, that is zakat al-fitr. And its time is very short and limited. Zakat al-mal depends on when did you start possessing the nisab, the amount of wealth which is zakatable. So if you earn that much, if you save that much, if you save some gold, 85 gram of gold, or 595 gram of silver, or the value of either one of them, whichever is lesser of cash. Um, if you possess this at any time of the year, you mark down that day, you say it is the 20th of Safar. Again, we don't go by the Gregorian calendar because it is the lunar calendar which is a few days lesser than the Gregorian calendar so what you will do is uh, if you earn that much if you possess that much um, on any day of the year Safar, Muharram, Rabi al Awwal, Rabi al Thani then next year on the same day you look into your position how much do you have oh mashallah it has become the value of 190 190 gram of gold uh, or a couple thousand gram of silver or the value of that in cash I have 20 grams oh that's zakatable alhamdulillah when is it due 
it is to be paid on Rajab. Yeah, but I like to pay it on Ramadan because the greater reward, the good deeds will be uh, multiplied, the reward for the good deeds will be multiplied in Ramadan. Okay, then pay it in advance. Do not postpone it. It is not permissible to postpone the payment of your zakah, but only for a few days. Like if you know that you set some money on a side for a family to return back from a journey, for somebody for an operation, uh, but to keep it for weeks, for months, for uh, that is not permissible. So the only way to set up your zakah payment in Ramadan is by paying it in advance in Ramadan before the next year is due. Then you set it up this day, and this is no problem in this case. Uh, okay, we'll take a short break, and we'll be back, inshallah, in a few minutes. Please stay tuned. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome back. Our phone number is area code 002 then 0238 or 132. Um, Aisha from the KSA who called earlier before the break and uh, she asked about if somebody apostated then he returned back to Islam then he apostated again and he returned back to Islam. Would that person <coughs> be forgiven or not forgiven? And she was confused concerning a reference in the Quran in which Allah the Almighty said that those who have upstated and uh, remain in a state of kufr uh, shall never be forgiven and sh the tawbah shall never be accepted. Basically the reference is uh, of Surah Al-Imran. In Surah Al-Imran chapter number 3 uh, verse number 90, Allah the Almighty says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا بَعْدَ إِيمَانِهِمْ ثُمَّ ازْدَادُوا كُفْرًا لَن تُقْبَلَ تَوْبَتُهُمْ وَأُولَٰئِكَ هُمُ الضَّالُّونَ Which means, verily those who have disbelieved after they have accepted faith, ثُمَّ ازْدَادُوا كُفْرًا Then they increase in their disbelief. لَن تُقْبَلَ تَوْبَتُهُمْ Their repentance shall never be accepted. لَن is for the future. Absolutely, the repentance shall never be accepted. And they are the astray ones. In fact, this ayah means what? As you understand that the previous ayat have been talking about the people of the book uh, as well and how they rejected the message of their own prophets. So for rejecting Jesus, peace be upon him, and altering his message, for rejecting Moses, peace be upon him, and changing his uh, uh, book, the Torah, they have disbelieved in that. If they remained in this condition, وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارُ And they die in a state of disbelief. So they neither believed in their prophets, nor in Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. And believing in their prophets would entail and require them to believe in the message of Prophet Muhammad Wasallam. That's why the following ass is what? إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَمَاتُوا وَهُمْ كُفَّارُ And they died in a state of disbelief. فَلَنْ يُقْبَلَ مِنْ أَحَدِهِمْ مِلْءُ الْأَرْضِ ذَهَبًا وَلَوْ افْتَدَى بِهِ If one of them, of those who died in a state of disbelief, have an earth full of gold, and he is willing to pay it as a ransom to free himself from hellfire, it will not be accepted from him. Why? Because, <coughs> because they disbelieved in Allah the Almighty. And for them there is a very painful and a severe torment. So this ayah explains what was mentioned in the previous ayah. Which is, if they die in a state of disbelief. If they die in a state of disbelief. Why? Because of the many references that يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَى مَنْ تَعْبُ If the person repented, as long as his repentance was before death and before the threat and before experiencing Sakarat al-Maut, uh, 
and before perhaps the sun rises from the west as a major sign before the occurrence of the day of judgment their tawbah will be accepted in surah an nisa allah the almighty says inna allah la yaghfiru an yushraka bihi wa yaghfiru ma duna dhalika liman yasha wa man yushrik billahi faqad iftara ithman azima faqad dalla dalalan ba'ida so in these two ayahs allah the almighty said that he doesn't forgive shirk yet he forgives anything else anything other than shirk if the person repents if the person recognizes his fault if the person begs allah for forgiveness he will be forgiven and if he repents from shirk he will be forgiven but if the person dies in a state of disbelief he will never be forgiven as he said in surah al-araf he put a very very interesting condition that the only case in the only condition that a non-believer may enter paradise is whenever al-jamal refers either to a real camel or a thick rope that the shippers and the sailors use a, a thick rope can you make a thick rope go through the needle's eye it's impossible <laughs> rather it's more impossible for a camel to go through the needle uh, hole so those who rejected our verses and they showed arrogance and they refused to believe in uh, faith they shall never enter paradise not only that when they die as in the long hadith of al-bara ibn azib لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء when the angels of punishment and torment take their souls and they climb with them, they go to each heaven. They say, what is this soul that has a very offensive smell? So they call him by the worst of his names in this life. He is so and so, the son of so and so. So he will not be accepted and his soul will be thrown back to earth. In this case, Allah the Almighty said, لا تفتح لهم أبواب السماء ولا يدخلون الجنة حتى يالج الجمل في سم الخياط. But if the person repented and came back to Islam before these two cases, before death, before death rattle, or before the sun rises from the west, Allah will accept the repentance as long as they're sincere. Assalamu alaikum. Sister Umm Abd al-Rahman from the KSA. No problem. Please try again. I know that uh, you've been waiting for a long time, but because I just needed to wrap up the answer to the question uh, and I haven't yet by the way in Surah Al-Imran uh, as well Allah the Almighty says وَقَالَ طَائِفَةٌ مِّنْ أَهْلِ الْكِتَابِ آمِنُوا بِالَّذِي أُنْزِلَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَجْهَ النَّهَارِ وَكْفُرُوا آخِرَهُ لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرْجِعُونَ وَلَا تُؤْمِنُوا إِلَّا لِمَنْ تَبِعَ دِينَكُمْ قُلْ إِنَّ الْهُدَى هدى الله أن يؤتى أحد مثل ما أوتيتم أو يحاجكم عند ربكم. This ayah, ayah number seventy one, tells us about a very evil and sick practice that some of Bani Israel did during the life of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. In the ayah number seventy two, they said Allah the Almighty recounted what they said. A group of the people of the book. Said, Aminu biladi unzila ala ladina amanu wajhan nahari wa kfuru akhirahu la'allahum yarjiun. Look at their plot, their evil, slicky plot. They sent a group of them, some of their learned people, to the Prophet and they declared faith. They accepted Islam. Then, a while later, they came in public and said, No, 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 we realize that Islam is not really the true religion. This is all fake, and this guy is faker. It was in order to be the enemy within, in order to cause a confusion amongst the rose of Muslims. So that's why Allah the Almighty does not forgive at all a person who declares Islam. Then he apostates and he dies in this condition. But if he repents and if he accepts Islam sincerely, he will be forgiven and he will be treated as Muslim. And that happened in the history, even amongst some of the companions. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Brother Abdul Raouf from the KSA. Uh, Sheikh, how are you doing uh, this evening? I'm fine, Alhamdulillah. Thank you for asking, Brother Abdul Raouf. Welcome to the program. Uh, we wish your mother uh, quick recovery and best health, inshallah. Ya Rabbi. 
and may Allah Allah. give barakah your for your time in Ramadan. Mm-hmm. We are uh, missing the time flying in Ramadan. We really just cannot realize how fast is the time flying. Ma'am. Jazakallah khairan. Uh, Same to you. May Allah bless you and your family, Brother Abdul Rauf. I have a question, a couple of questions in fact. Uh, my question number one is, I just wanted to know if a person has to travel to Mecca for some personal work or a business meeting and once he finishes his work and then if he has to perform Umrah, where does he uh, start his Umrah from? Does he need to go to appointed Mikat or he can just wear Ahram in Mecca and start his Umrah? This is my question number one. And my question number two is when Umar ibn Khattab ta'ala, and who went to out one night and saw people were praying behind the reciter, he remarked what an excellent innovation, beta. Mm. But the prayer which they do not perform but keep at its time is better than the one they are offering. He mm. meant the prayer in the last part of the night. So does it conclude that we still can miss our tarawi and pray tahajjud in the last part of the night is better than uh, the tarawi? Okay, barakallahu feek. Jazakallahu khairan. Jazakallahu khairan, Chief. Wa jazakum, brother Abdul Rauf. I know that a lot of people are going to perform Umrah during Ramadan, and I was hoping myself to go for a day or two as I normally do, but alhamdulillah, shukla, I have a more important duty to do. That's why I'm not able to perform Umrah. Umrah for me now is nafila. Uh, serve my family is mandatory especially during this time so my advice to those who are going to perform Umrah if you have a dual intention if you have a business meeting uh, in Mecca or in Jeddah and you're coming crossing the Miqat if you already have in mind and you contemplated that you are going to perform Umrah even after you finish your business meeting then you should not cross the Miqat the appointed Miqat your Miqat without assuming the intention of ihram then you get to either go first to perform your umrah then attend your business or go simply attend your business meeting and then whenever you want to perform umrah you have to return back to your miqat your appropriate miqat then make the assume the intention of ihram from there and come to mecca to perform uh, your uh, umrah um, sister saima now i remember asked about uh, do the dead people hear us let's take this call first assalamu alaikum sister jamila from the ksa assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum sister jamila wa alaikum wa jazakum go ahead okay please try again um, do the dead hear us? Do they hear their family members? Do they hear those who go and greet them? This fact to us is entirely unseen. So if anyone dares to say yes, then he has to provide a proof, either an ayah or a hadith, or perhaps says that, yes, I died one day and when I was dead, we could hear you guys and of course the latest when it didn't happen so we must rely on a reference a quran or a sunnah and that's why there is a difference of opinion in this regard the vast majority of the ulama are of the view that yes the dead hear or could hear in a better statement because they do not hear everything they hear what allah allows them to hear and it varies from an individual to another what do they hear and what is the proof? I'm sorry, let me take Jamila's call, then inshallah it will be the last call. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum assalam. Go ahead, Sister Jamila, please. Ramadan Mubarak, Sheikh. Thank you very much for the show and having the opportunity to talk to you online. Thank you, uh, Sister nice. Jamila, and Mubarak, Ramadan Mubarak to and your family. Thank you. Yes, I have one question. Hmm? Is it permissible in Islam to adopt a child in an orphanage? You don't know the parents, whether they're Muslim or they're Christian. They're just in the orphanage. Is it uh, permissible in Islam? Okay. Got your question. Thank you. So let me provide the references of the vast majority of the fuqaha versus many of the Hanafi 
scholars are of the view that no, the dead cannot hear. And they also have the references. The obvious meaning of some of the ayat which need further explanation. So in brief, in the remaining a few minutes, it has been narrated in the sound a hadith, both al-Bukhari and Muslim, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said about the dead person, إِنَّهُ لَيَسْمَعُ خَفْقَ نِعَالِهِمْ إِذَا صَرَفُوا Whenever the person dies and whenever he is buried, he could hear the footsteps and the noise of their shoes against the ground as they're leaving the graveyard and going home. He could hear that. Um, during the Battle of Badr and after the Prophet ﷺ, after three days when the Prophet ﷺ ordered that the bodies of Abu Jahl and these horrible guys, these tyrant guys, Meccan chieftains, to be buried in the Qalib of Badr, the Prophet ﷺ spoke to them and he said something very interesting. He said, Ya Abu Jahl ibn Hisham, Ya Umayya ibn Khalaf, Hal wajadtum ma wa'ada rabbukum haqqa? He was talking to Abu Jahl as if he could hear him. Umayyah ibn Khalif, these guys were the worst. Uh, when Abu Jahl died, the Prophet said, Mata Fir'aunu hadihi al-Ummah. The Pharaoh of this Ummah have passed away, have been killed. So the Prophet uh, addressed them and said, Hal wajadtum ma wa'ada rabbukum haqqa? Did you really find Allah's promise or what your Lord had promised? In, in this case, it was a threat. True. So some of the companions, Umar ibn Khattab said, Ya Rasulullah, they cannot hear you. They are way dead. The Prophet ﷺ answered saying, By Allah, you guys cannot hear me better than they do. Which means that they can perfectly hear my question. But they cannot answer. They cannot talk. But they know I'm talking to them and they hear me. So this is uh, some of, and, and this is a hadith which is also collected by Imam al-Bukhari or Muslim, and another sound hadith when the Prophet sallallahu taught the salam to Umm al-Mu'mineen Aisha radiallahu anha. What we say when we visit the graveyard, we say, Assalamu alaykum, ahl al-diyari. We're addressing a second person. We're talking to people whom we assume that they can hear us. That's very obvious from the hadith. Assalamu alaykum, ahl al-diyari, min al-Mu'mineen wa al-Muslimin, wa inna insha'Allahu bikum lahiqoon. These are the very prominent uh, evidences that Al-Jumhur, including Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, provide their view that, yes, the dead can hear us. Not necessarily everything, but they can hear what Allah the Almighty allows them to hear. Uh, according to uh, another view, which is adopted by Umm al-Mu'minin Aisha and many of the Hanafi scholars of the Hanafi school of thought, they said, no, they cannot hear because Allah the Almighty said in the Quran, إِنَّكَ لَا تُسْمِعُ الْمَوْتَ And in Surah Fatir, Allah the Almighty said, وَمَا أَنْتَ بِمُسْمِعٍ مَنْ فِي الْقُبُورِ You cannot make the dead hear you, and you cannot make those who are in the grave hear you. But because of the interpreters of the Quran said, this is a metaphor referring to that there are living people, but they are as the dead exactly. But in any case, I provided the view of the two uh, uh, opinions, Al-Jumhur, the vast majority of the scholars, and also the view of the Hanafi scholars in this regard. And by the end, Allah the Almighty knows uh, best. Um, uh, we ran out of time. I know that we only have uh, um, three pending questions. Zakat al-Fitr, for instance, quickly, Umm Abd rahman Yes, it is the responsibility of your husband to pay zakat al-fitr in your state and on, on behalf of all his family members, those who are living under his roof and his children, those who are under his guardianship, the wife, the children, so he pays zakat al-fitr. And by the way, if anyone wants to pay zakat al-fitr to extended family members, I don't have to pay zakat al-fitr for my parents. But if I want to, then I say, my dad, I'm going to pay zakat al-fitr for you this year. Okay, no problem, son. So I have either to get his consent, or if he says, uh, Muhammad, don't forget to pay zakat al fitr for me and for your mom. In this case, either they ask you to do it, or you ask them and you get their consent that you will do it for them, whether you know them or you don't. Inshallah, to be continued in the beginning of the next week on Sunday, we'll begin a new episode of Ask Huda during Ramadan, where inshallah we'll begin by tackling 
the remaining pending questions. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته.